Hello friends, hope you all are doing good. I am Paradi Kochar and today in this video we will discuss what is market based management of clouds. So let's get started. First we will discuss what is cloud computing. Cloud computing is the on demand availability of computer system resources, especially data storage and computing power without direct active management by the user. The term is generally used to describe data centers available to many users over the internet. Large clouds often have functions distributed over multiple locations from central server. So in simplest language, Cloud computing is the use of remote servers on the internet to store, manage and process data rather than using local servers. So basically we are using some IT services and resources that are managed by some third party and we are using some services and we are only paying for the services that we use. Now we will talk about what is market based management of clouds. Cloud computing provides the architecture for creating market oriented cloud by leveraging technologies such as virtual machine. So the real potential of cloud computing resides in the fact that it actually facilitates the establishment of a market for trading IT services dynamically. Market oriented cloud computing is originated from the coordination of several components like the service consumers, the service providers and other entities that make trading between these two groups possible. So here we, we see that there are two major entities that are involved in the cloud computing environment, the service provider and the service consumer. The service provider is a person or an organization that is responsible for making a service available to the interested party. Similarly, the cloud cons consumer is a person or an organization that maintains a business relationship with and uses services from a cloud provider. It provides thoughts on market-based resource management strategies that encompass both customer-driven service management and computational risk management to sustain SLA-oriented resource allocation. SLA is a service level agreement that specifies the details of the service to be provided in terms of metrics agreed upon by all the parties and penalties for meeting and violating the expectations respectively. Now the question that arises is why is market based management of clouds necessary or what is its importance? So as consumers rely on cloud providers to supply all their computing needs, they will require specific QoS that is quality of service to be maintained by their providers. Similarly, the providers will need to consider and meet different QoS parameters of each individual consumer as negotiated in specific service level agreements. So market oriented resource management is necessary to regulate the supply and demand of cloud resources at market equilibrium. Now we will look at the reference model for market oriented cloud computing. In the global market oriented cloud uh, arch, uh, market oriented architecture, the fundamental component as we have seen is the virtual marketplace and this virtual marketplace is represented by three components, the cloud exchange, the cloud coordinators and the cloud brokers. So let us discuss these components in details. Cloud exchange acts as a market maker bringing the service producers and the service consumers together. Cloud coordinators. Cloud coordinators represent the cloud vendors and publish the services that these vendors offer. Cloud brokers. 
cloud brokers operate on behalf of the consumers and identify the subset of services that match customers' requirements in terms of service profiles and quality of services. Cloud brokers perform basically the same function in this market as they do in the real world market. They mediate between the consumers and the producers. Now, this is the diagram of a global cloud market. In this diagram, we could see there are several entities which include the IT consumers, the cloud providers, and the brokers. Such markets can bridge disparate clouds allowing consumers to choose a provider that suits their requirements by either executing a service level agreement in advance or by buying capacity on the spot. Similarly, the providers can use the markets in order to perform effective capacity planning. A provider is equipped with a, with a price setting mechanism which sets the current price for the resources based on market conditions, user demand, etc. Similarly, the brokers gain their utility through the difference between the price paid by the consumers for gaining resource shares and that paid to the providers for leasing their services. Apart from these three components, we can see there are three other major components involved that includes the directory, the auctioner and the bank. So let's uh, see the functions of these components. The directory. The market directory contains a listing of all the published services that are available in the cloud marketplace. It allows participants to locate providers or consumers with the right offers. Auctioneer. The auctioneer is in charge of keeping track of the running auctions in the marketplace and it also verifies that the auctions for services are properly conducted and that malicious market players are prevented from performing any illegal activity. So it basically periodically clears bids. Now the third component is the bank. It takes care of the financial aspect of all the operations happening in the virtual marketplace. It ensures that financial transactions pertaining to agreements between the participants are carried out. Now, this is the figure that shows the high-level architecture for supporting market-oriented resource allocation in data centers and cloud. There are basically four main entities involved, which are the user or the broker, the SLA resource allocator, the virtual machines, and the physical machines. Let us discuss these entities in detail. Users or Brokers Users or brokers acting on their behalf submit service requests from anywhere in the world to the data center and cloud. Basically, user is the one who consumes the service and broker is the one who is in contact with both the cloud consumer and the cloud provider and it takes the request from the user and forwards it to the uh, service provider. Next is the service level agreement resource allocator. It acts as the interface between the data center or the cloud service provider and the external user or broker. Next is the virtual machines. Multiple virtual machines can be started and stopped dynamically on a single physical machine to meet accepted service requests, hence providing maximum flexibility to configure various partitions of resources on the same physical machine to different specific requirements of service request. The last component is the physical machine. The data center comprises multiple computing servers that provide resources to meet service demands. Now, this is the diagram of the SLA resource allocator. As we have already discussed that SLA resource allocator acts as the interface between the cloud service and the external users. So, it will require the interaction or the communication of some mechanisms to support the SLA oriented resource management. 
these mechanisms interface with the resource management systems of the provider in order to guarantee the allocation being offered or negotiated can be reclaimed so that service level agreement violations do not occur. Now, what are these mechanisms and how these mechanisms work? First mechanism is the service request examiner and admission control. Whenever a service request is first submitted, the service request examiner and admission control mechanism interprets whether the submitted request meet the QS requirements and then it determines whether to accept the request or reject the request. Thus, it ensures that there is no overloading of resources when many service requests cannot be fulfilled simultaneously due to limited resource. Pricing The pricing mechanism decides how service requests are charged. It can be either fixed or variable depending on the market conditions. Accounting The accounting mechanism maintains the act actual usage of resources by request so that the final cost can be computed and charged to the user. VM monitor. The VM monitor mechanism keeps track of the availability of virtual machines and their resources. The dispatcher. The dispatcher mechanism starts the execution of the accepted service request on allocated virtual machines. The service request monitor. The service request monitor mechanism keeps track of the execution progress of service request. Now we'll discuss the terms cloud federation or intercloud. The terms cloud federation and intercloud are often used interchangeably and convey the general meaning of an aggregation of cloud computing providers that have separate administrative domains. So, a federated cloud is the deployment and management of multiple external and internal cloud computing services to match the business needs. The term federation implies that there are agreements between various cloud providers allowing them to leverage each other's services in a privileged manner. So, the standard definition of the term cloud federation as given by Riven Cohen, who is the founder and the chief technology officer of the Enamely Corporation, is it manages consistency and access controls when two or more independent geographically distinct clouds share either authentication, files, computing resources, command and control, or access to storage resources. The central idea is that you have multiple infrastructure as a service and platform as a service environments in the cloud and you may require the joining up and managing up of these multiple environments. Now the question that comes is why cloud federation or why it is necessary, what are its benefits? So it has numerous benefits which include load balancing, capacity management, prevention from vendor lock-ins, prevention from power outages and failures, efficient use of surplus resources, and scaling data to other cloud service providers. Now, we will discuss what is Cloud Federation stack. Creating a Cloud Federation involves research and development and diff at different levels. The levels are the conceptual level, the logical and operational level, and the infrastructure level. Each cloud federation level presents different challenges and operates at a different level, layer of the IT stack. At the conceptual level, it addresses the challenges in presenting a cloud federation as a favorable solution with respect to the use of services leased by a single cloud provider. Elements of concern at this level are motivations for cloud providers to join a federation and for cloud consumers to leverage a federation. Also, obligations of providers once they have joined the federation. The second, at the second level, the logical and operation, operational level, it identifies and addresses the challenges in devising a framework 
that enables the aggregation of providers that belong to different administrative domains within a context of a single overlay infrastructure which is the cloud federations cloud federation at this level policies and rules for interoperations are defined the third infrastructure level the infrastructure level addresses the technical challenges that are involved in enabling a heterogeneous cloud computing system to interoperate seamlessly now we will look at what are the third party cloud services the third party cloud services are the services in which the user wants to acquire some service which he or she is not able to get from the hired cloud provider it has certain advantages and disadvantages advantages include maintain easy maintenance and support skill company with all the resources required security benefits and cost advantages the disadvantages include security worries lack of control and potential cost drawbacks there are different cloud third party cloud services which are available to us which includes the amazon web services the microsoft azure and the google app engine so let's discuss these third party cloud services case study of microsoft azure microsoft azure is a cloud computing platform and infrastructure created by microsoft for building deploying and managing applications and services it was released on 1st february 2010 as windows azure before being renamed to microsoft azure on 25th march 2014 microsoft azure provides both platform as a service and infrastructure as a service it supports many different programming languages tools and frameworks including both microsoft specific and third party software and systems it has mainly three parts storage scalable computing and a basic fabric to hold everything together across a heterogeneous network next is the case study of google app engine google app engine is an example of platform as a service it provides web app developers and enterprises with access to google's scalable hosting and tier 1 internet service the google app engine supports applications which are written in java or python applications in google app engine uses google query language if applications are not compatible to google app engine then they are needed to be made compatible with google app engine all applications are not supported by google app engine google app engine also removed some system administration and developmental tasks to make it easier to write scalable applications so with this we come to an end of our video thank you all for watching do hit the like button if you enjoyed the video